is your XLT boring like mine was? Then stay tuned because I'm going to show you what parts you need to transform it from this to this. So the big question is, what did I pay to Raptor swap my 2020 F-150 XLT? All right, so it's, it's a little bit of a toss-up because some of the parts I got, a lot of them I got used from Marketplace or when I worked for Ford, I had a leftover fender. There's definitely Raptor tax, let me tell you what. I don't even want to know how much it's been. It's been a lot, I know that. Uh, good Lord. Okay, let's break this shit down. All right, so some of the parts that I got when I started my, uh, my build process, I got off of, uh, like, trial trial parts i guess you could say like um so i got them at a pretty pretty steep discount like my upper control arms i think i paid 800 bucks for them and they're like 1400 now so um but they were a new company and well we saw how that turned out i'll give a price of what i paid and then i'll give you a price of what today's prices are for all this stuff just nerding away, doing all this research for you guys. Well, if you buy these from Ford, you're gonna go broke. That's why I sourced a lot of mine on Marketplace. You can build your bumper with your stock setup. All you need is the back pad and then the two bumper caps. That's it. Everything else bolts right up. And at 648 bucks, I think I paid $100 for mine on Marketplace. And it came with the, the top step too. Your wheel opening moldings, these are hard to source, and they're 425 bucks a piece if you can't find them. And you're gonna need a lot of these yellow bastards, trust me. Front bumper, a thousand bucks. I mean, that's just for the the center part. Then you got 300 and 350. Just buy buy an ad bumper. Like, it's, it'll look a lot better anyways and hold up better. The skid plate. The fucking... The skid plate, dog. Just the skid plate itself for the front bumper. $1,020. They are higher than a kite, man. You're spending $1,500 just on a plate. I got mine for like $75. Which I can't source the cowl. I don't know what the part number is for that. And then these lift cylinders, which I need to buy, they're 26 bucks a piece, but your stock F-150 ones will not hold them. But I will tell you that your original hood hinges do work with the Raptor. So you don't need new hood hinges. You don't need a new hood latch. You don't need any of that. All you need is the freaking hood. You need both bed sides. And then you need the wheelhouse assembly inside of each one, which is $281 a piece. But even if you source these from here or you go to your local uh, dealership, they're still going to charge you for shipping. So keep that in mind. Just because these are $281, they're probably $700 a piece. Grand total, $11,900. Holy shit. Let's check this. Let's see what shipping would be. $1,299. So you're looking at a grand total of $13,200. But wait, there's more. Come on! Yeah, you guys are probably laughing because I have a desktop. It's just convenient. It's nice for my 3D printing. Let's go into here. $250 for the cowl, the hood cowl. $492 for a tailgate on 
eBay, which comes pre-painted. Honestly, you're not going to find one probably cheaper than that because I still don't have a tailgater applique for my truck. Applique, 400 bucks used. I'm just going off a of marketplace. Bedsides, I couldn't find anything but OEM and they're $1,000 for the set. I got mine on marketplace for like 200 bucks. Headlights, upgraded uh, motos, so 1240. Tail lights, 610. And then the marker lights, I can't find them, but they were like, I think 70 bucks a piece and you need four of them. So we'll go 280 on that. And if you want the third brake light, the clear one that comes with it, I think they're like 300 bucks. I can't remember what, I think I got mine for free from a friend. I don't even have mine wired because you gotta flash it because they're LEDs and it'll just hyper, hyper flash if you don't do it. Oh, same with the marker lights. Mine aren't hooked up either because of that. I still got, <laughs> I'm such a shit bag. So grand total, without paint, without any assembly, without any, anything, just parts. And that's not even everything. You still need the rivets and all that crap too for the bedsides and whatnot. $17,472. That's just for the exterior. I got my, my Raptor seats, the, their seat covers. I got them off of uh, eBay, I think for 350 bucks. They came with the front and the back seats. If you have an XLT, they don't come with a fold down uh, armrest in the center. So you have to get a Platinum, Lariat, Raptor, the, the high trim level um, limited, the high trim level trucks come with those armrests in the center. And I got mine from uh, a junkyard, I think $150, I'm not even kidding. Cause it was like that poop nasty color, that nasty like brownish tan. And then I got the seats for three or 350. The seat foams are different, all right? Cause you know, the Raptors come tucked, like, they, like, hug you when you're sitting in them. Front seats, the back cushions are the only ones that you need. You don't need the bottom ones. The bottom ones, will f they'll work with the original ones that you have. So, the back cushions on the front seats are the only thing that you need to replace. Those are $153, $154 a piece. It's like $300 for the cushions, $300 for the, $300 for the seats. And like 300 bucks for the actual seat, the Raptor seat covers that are the OEM ones that I found on eBay. I don't know if they're still available or not, but it's like $900 to do it. And if you try to find these seats anywhere, they're like $4,000, $5,000. Like it's insane. All you got to do is transfer over your, uh, you know, your little heat pads thing. Just, you know, carefully take them off the old ones. And then I used a hot glue gun and re-glued it back to the new foam. So I just added up how much I spent on my exterior pieces. 3280 3, bucks plus my amount of money that I spent on painting the stuff too. And you got to take into consideration your labor. There's another thing that I couldn't find. It was a hard thing to source is the antenna. The top mounts are different. Disconnect it from underneath the fender. There's two little tabs on your glove box. If you push those in, your glove box will drop upside down. And then you'll see the cable going through there for your antenna. And you just unscrew it right there. And then feed it through just like it would stock. That took me a while to figure out. So hopefully that saves you guys some time. I mean, there are going to be some odds and ends and stuff that I forget about this, obviously, but the meat and potatoes is what I'm really talking about. You know what I mean? Like just the little knickknacks, odds and ends and stuff. That's a, that's preference, really. I mean, some of you probably won't even replace your antenna and that's understandable. I don't really listen to the radio myself. So what was our total before? It was like, it was like 17 grand, right? Yeah. I think it was like 17 grand down to 3,200 up, but I sourced a lot. A lot of stuff online, you know, car-part.com. They have 
linked up to all of the scrap yards around and it makes it just so much easier to find stuff if you can't find it on marketplace that's one of the resources i used uh, a raptor swap group on facebook that you can follow to you'll probably get some shit from some people but read the announcements <laughs> the announcements have a lot of the stuff that you need to know so i've sourced all the suspension parts and directly from for $3,900, if you're running Gen 2 like I am, this is all for Gen 2 parts. What I mean by Gen 2 is the second generation of the Raptor. Those are the parts that you'd be using. But you have to replace your bucket, which is what holds the top of your suspension. So you actually have to cut it off. And the easiest way is with the Sawzall. Those are $550 bucks for the buckets. And those are from Crazy House Customs. That's what I have on my truck. That's what a lot of us have. As far as things that you can look out for to try and find cheaper, but the upper control arms, you can source those cheaper. I actually have a set of stock ones that I'll sell for 150 bucks. Just source your own shocks. Like they're way cheaper. I got my front ones with Icon collars for $300, I believe. My rear shocks I got for 150 for the one and 85 for the other. So that's another thing you got to take into consideration when you're doing this. These shocks are very expensive and they cost a lot of money to be rebuilt. They're like 700 bucks for the front sets, just the front. You might as well add another 700 bucks to the back sets. And they recommend to rebuild them every 20 to 60,000 miles. Raptor tax. So I just did the math on mine. I have some extra stuff that you don't absolutely need, but it's recommended and it does make a difference. So my upper control arms that are fully adjustable. And then I have IWE deletes, which takes away from the vacuum ceiling for the four wheel drive, which I don't have hooked up at all. I don't even have axles in the front end right now. I have brand new ones to put on. I just, my front diff is broken. So I just haven't had time to get to it. IWE deletes, slot deletes, the buckets, and uh, the stainless steel brake lines. So that added up quite a bit. And I couldn't source any uh, lower control arms for cheaper than what it was at the dealership. So I think it was like 13 or 1350 for both sides together. So 4,040 bucks was my total, my, my suspension setup. I know this wasn't that great of a video excitement wise, but it's very informative. And now you guys know what parts you actually need to source to do a swap like this. I know it can seem overwhelming and I know that it seems very expensive, but nothing says that you need to do all this stuff right now. You can start collecting your parts and then do it once you get everything. With paint and everything else, I would say I'm in it for about 10,000 bucks. And that's, you know, pretty much everything. I got a few little things here to get, like the tailgate and the applique. And then I'm gonna eventually have the exhaust coming out the back, just like the normal ones would. But my whole thing with this is I had a 3.5 and it had cam phaser issues after 18,000 miles. Like I didn't wanna go through that again. So that's why I opted to buy a 5.0 and do a Raptor swap for it because it's, a much more reliable and better platform you know smash that subscribe button help brother out help brother out that'd be great i'd appreciate it um peace out girl scout see you in the next one